welcome to the fifth lesson in the series on software. In the last lesson, we learned that the first thing a computer does when it boots up is to check the ROM chip which holds the BIOS. The BIOS then checks that all the circuits are connected and makes sure the RAM chip and the drives are available. This process is called POST or Power on Self Test. Today we will be looking at the BIOS and POST in more detail. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to Provide explanations of the terms BIOS and Bootstrap Loader Describe the purpose of Power on Self Test Explain the booting up process and the shutting down process you know, I was sitting at my computer waiting for it to boot up and I wondered where the strange term boot your computer comes yeah. from. I did a bit of research on that recently and came across an interesting story. Do you remember in the first software lesson we discussed the history of computer software? We also saw how computers used to use holes bunched into paper tapes to store information. Yes, I remember. Well, when those computers were switched on, a built-in program was executed. This program started the computer's processing routine. Because of this, it was said that the computer was busy putting itself up by its bootstraps. I believe this phrase comes from a passage in the fantasy novel The Adventures of Baron von Munchausen. The boastful Baron describes how he evaded the Turkish army by using his bootstraps. A bootstrap is a loop piece of leather or material sewn on the side or rear of a boot to help pull the boots on. The Baron apparently used his bootstraps to scale the mirror-like face of a sheer cliff. His bootstraps helped to pull him over the cliff. Now we use this term to describe how the computer performs checks and loads or boots the operating system without any assistance. Sure, now I'm curious to know exactly what happens when you boot up your computer. Salai, so your computer hardware can't do much without instructions. When you turn on a computer, the first thing it does is go searching for a program that can tell it what to do next. The program the CPU is looking for is a very small part of the operating system known as the boot program or bootstrap loader program. This program is stored in the ROM chip and is called the boot program because it essentially helps the computer pull itself up by its own bootstraps. It does this by loading or booting the rest of the operating system into memory. This program is part of the BIOS. You will remember from a previous lesson that BIOS stands for Basic Input Output System. It is an interface between the computer's hardware and software. We also saw in a previous lesson that the BIOS has built-in software that is typically placed in a ROM chip. Let's briefly review what the BIOS does. The BIOS determines what a computer can do without accessing any programs on the hard disk. It handles all input-output functions and controls how your PC starts up. It also contains information about which devices are attached to the computer. For example, which hard drive and CD-ROM drive you have. Another important function it performs is to manage the flow of data between the operating system and some of the attached devices. When a PC boots up, the BIOS immediately takes control. Its first duty is to run a series of system checks called the Power on Self Test or POST. This test ensures that your system is functioning correctly. If the BIOS detects any problem during this testing phase, it will still attempt to continue starting the computer. But if the problems are severe, the BIOS may halt the system. After the CPU has finished its checks, it starts looking for the rest of the operating system. The first place it normally looks is in the stiffy disk drive. If the disk drive is empty, the CPU continues its search on the hard drive. If there is a disk in the stiffy drive, your computer checks whether it contains the operating system. If it doesn't, the computer informs you that you have an invalid system disk or a non-system disk or disk error. This is the error message we saw in lesson 2. 
To correct this problem, you just eject the disk and then press any key on your keyboard to have the CPU resume checking for the operating system on your hard drive. As soon as the CPU locates the operating system, it loads it into memory. Depending on the operating system you are running, you will see a message telling you the operating system is loading. Once the operating system takes control, you can use the application packages, other programs and utilities running within the operating system environment. I've heard that you can change information in the BIOS. Now, if the BIOS does all the checks, isn't it dangerous to change it? Mm. No, it's vital to be able to make some changes, but you have to be qualified or must know what you are doing to make those changes. Look at the BIOS screen on this computer. You can see that you can make changes or add components. IT technicians need to be able to make these changes themselves and not have to rely on the manufacturers. For example, if you have installed a new hard drive onto the computer, you must tell the BIOS that you have a new hardware. You can see on this screen how easily that can be done. Before making these changes, you must have enough technical knowledge to be able to enter the correct settings. These types of changes cannot harm the components of the BIOS and can therefore be changed. These changeable settings are stored in a separate memory chip called the CMOS, which stands for Complementary Metal Oxide Semiconductor. Now that we understand some basic terminology, let's look at the actual process. When you turn your computer on, you see the BIOS busy with its checks. By now, the screen should be familiar to you. What you are looking at here is the boot-up screen. During this stage, the CPU is running tests to see whether the various parts of the system are working properly. What you are looking at now is a progress report of what is happening and what checks have been done. On many machines, you will notice the computer counting up its memory. You may also see messages being displayed as the CPU checks various peripherals or devices. We will hear a beep to tell us that everything seems to be okay. Yeah, it seems like quite a procedure to turn the computer on. Thank goodness you just have to pull out the plug to turn it off. That is something you should never do, as it can damage your computer's hard drive. Let me show you the correct way to shut down a computer. First, select Start from the menu bar. Now select Shut Down. Now select OK. So, why is this all necessary? To answer that, let me tell you what happens when you shut down the machine. Firstly, the operating system closes all the programs that are currently active. If a program has unsaved information, you are given an opportunity to save it before closing the program. Yeah, I've seen the message asking if I want to save any changes. Then the operating system writes its current settings to a special configuration file so that it can boot up next time with the same settings. If the computer has software to control the power, which means it can physically turn the computer's power off, then the operating system will turn off the computer completely when it finishes its own shutdown cycle. Otherwise, you will see a message saying, it is now safe to turn off your computer. You can then turn off the power manually. So, you see, if you do not allow the computer to follow the correct shutdown routine, you can cause damage to the files on the hard drive. Mm, and I've noticed that when I don't shut down the computer properly and I start it up again, a strange program seems to run. That is called the scan disk and it is a utility that looks something like this. Now, why does this utility have to run? ScanDisk is a utility that checks the computer's hard drive to make sure there are no significant errors on the drive. Now, can you run ScanDisk manually or does it only run when you don't shut down the computer correctly? You can run ScanDisk at any time. ScanDisk is an essential utility because it corrects some errors on the hard drive. In fact, this utility should be run once a month as part of the housekeeping functions we mentioned earlier. Let me show you how to run ScanDisk manually from this computer. First select Start, then Programs, then Accessories, then System Tools, then ScanDisk. You have the option of running ScanDisk in either Standard or Thorough mode. 
Selecting standard mode will check all files and folders for errors. Selecting thorough mode will do the standard check and will also check the disk surface for errors. This program can scan and fix most errors on the drive. Well, certainly is a lot of information about drivers and utilities. Now it's time for your task. With the help of your teacher, have a look at the BIOS information on your school computers to see what components have been installed. Observe the boot sequence on your school computer and see if you can tell what is being checked. For example, find out how much memory is on your school computer. Write a short explanation on what POST is and what it does. Thank you for joining me for this lesson on software. And as always, don't forget to visit our website for more information. From me, goodbye.